And I want to go now to Democratic presidential candidate Julian Castro, who served as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Obama as well. Uh, Secretary, thank you for being with me. Um, look, you heard the president say the Republican Party will soon be known as the party of health care. You watch. What's your response? Uh, I would say um, that I would add in no health care. Uh, the Republican Party is going to be known as a party of taking health care away from millions of Americans. This is stunning, Aaron, uh, that this administration uh, is going completely against the will of the people, uh, go going against the will of Congress, uh, and trying to pull the rug out from under millions and millions of American families. People who have pre existing conditions, who are only able to get health insurance, able to afford health insurance because the Affordable Care Act says you cannot consider pre existing conditions to those health insurers. So basically, uh, this administration and the Republican Party want to get, go back to the bad old days uh, where people couldn't get health insurance if they had a pre existing condition, where folks were not able to stay on their parents' plan until the age of 26. They got thrown off a lot earlier. Uh, and generally, where millions and millions of people less had health insurance. I mean, the Affordable yeah. Care Act, uh, at one point, before this administration started to sabotage it, uh, 20 million more people were able to get affordable health care coverage. That had been amazing. And uh, it is something else to watch a president and a party uh, that get their kicks out of hurting people, whether it's with health care or those children that they're separating from their families at the border. Uh, it is just amazing to watch. And, of course, you know, when they got rid of the mandate, um, but, you know, left the Obamacare options in place, uh, you know, premiums have surged. I mean, they are, they are completely unaffordable for a lot of people because you got rid of the mechanism for paying for the coverage. I mean, you've been looking at this problem, and I know you support Medicare for all. Uh, Secretary, there's a new poll from Quinnipiac, and it asked Americans if replacing the current system with Medicare for all, right, which is a good, good catchphrase, it's thrown around, is it a good idea? 43% of people say it is. 45% it say the opposite. They say it's a bad idea. Are you worried that the party's going too far left, that Medicare for all may sound good, but it's scaring people? Well, you know, I grew up uh, with a grandmother that had diabetes, and um, before she passed away in early 1996, she had to have one of her feet amputated, which is very common for diabetics. Uh, but that entire time, she had Medicare. Uh, I want to make Medicare stronger for everybody that's on it and then make sure that everybody can have access to Medicare. Yeah, I believe that if somebody wants to have a private insurance plan, that they should be able to do that. But what I don't believe is that anybody in this country should ever go without health care, not health insurance, but actual health care yeah. and medication when they need it, um, when countries around the world have been able to figure this out a long time ago. So, you know, this is a debate that should see the light of day. I think that as people understand more and more about what this would mean for them and for their family and for families across the country, that uh, a lot of Americans do support it because they recognize that the system that we have today is broken, especially, yeah. and this is a great example today, because this administration has sabotaged health care for millions of Americans. I want to, you know, part of the reason this is coming up today, right, is the president went to Capitol Hill. He embraced it. Uh, he's publicly backing, uh, you know, the judge overturning uh, Obamacare, including pre-existing conditions. And he is doing so because he is vindicated, uh, he feels, by what we've heard from the Mueller report. Here's how he put it. The Mueller report was great. It could not have been better. Of course, um, look, uh, the president has not seen the actual report, uh, nor have we, just the bar summary. But so far, can you admit that he's right? It could not have been better for him? Well, of course we can't say that. Uh, we don't know what's actually in the report, other than the summary from the attorney general. And uh, with as much lying as this administration has done, why would we trust the summary of this report without actually seeing the report? I'm not saying that the report says, yes, he did it. Uh, you know, I, I'm inclined to believe the attorney general when he says that 
that yeah. it did not find that there was collusion. However, uh, I'm not prepared to say that I believe that the report did not point out some facts that we don't know about, uh, some actions that the president has taken or folks within his inner circle that suggest that they were trying to court or to benefit from Russian interference. But you're not saying Bill Barr is a liar. Collusion. You're not saying Bill Barr lied I'm not, in his summary. No. No. No, I am not. I'm just saying that uh, I think people have seen plenty of times during this administration exaggerations, uh, you know, leaving, leaving information out, sometimes outright lies. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the American people, and certainly the United States Congress, deserves to see the full contents of the Mueller report. Mm -hmm. And if people will think back, folks will remember, most of these reports, these blockbuster reports throughout the years, have actually been made public. Uh, it would be precedent setting if this kind of report did not get made public. Yeah. And that's the only way that we're going to know that we're getting the full truth. Before we go, I want to ask you about the Green New Deal. It's a concept you've supported. Um, our Jason Carroll spoke to Pennsylvania voters. Uh, they, these are all people who had voted for President Obama. They then voted for President Trump. And they specifically now associate Green New Deal with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And here's what they had to say about it. I, I think she's too bizarre. Too bizarre. Yes, yes. I think it, she's ridiculous and uh, be more realistic. Uh, they want to get all this uh, environment projects done in 10 years, and it's impossible. You lose jobs, you lose wages, you lose, you don't lose your economy. I don't agree with the way the direction they're going even more now. Uh, they're trying to, they're more liberal. They're attempting to be socialists. Is Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez's highly publicized Green New Deal secretary hurting your chances of winning the White House? I don't think so. You know, first of all, let me say that uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez uh, has been a breath of fresh air for the Democratic Party. She's brought a lot of great ideas, new ideas. Uh, not only that, you know, she's lived a life with uh, the ability to understand families that are struggling. And uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, the Green New Deal. I agree with the concept of it. Now, between the time when it's proposed and uh, if it were to be implemented, of course, there will be uh, negotiation that's involved in that. But here's the thing. Uh, this administration wants us to think that we cannot both protect our planet and create new jobs. We can see that by embracing renewable energy, embracing sustainability, that we can actually do both of those things. Here in Texas, for instance, the solar energy industry, the wind energy industry, uh, in places yeah. like Iowa that obviously I've been visiting a lot, yes. the wind energy industry. So don't let anybody tell you that you can't both create new jobs, generate a lot of economic growth, and also okay. do what's right to protect our planet. We can do those things. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Secretary Castro, thanks. Thank you.